Welcome everyone to our reflective service today here at church, online and read at home. It's good to be together again, especially today of all days, on Easter Day. Good to be together to worship God and to have fellowship together. And a particular welcome to any visitors with us this morning. We've got lots of visitors, and that's really great. And it's nice to see you at the back there, big smile. It's nice to have you all here. And our friends from El Salvador as well. It's great. Um, it's wonderful. It's really good. You're blessing our church by being here. Today is Easter Sunday, in case you didn't know. What a week it's been. Lent is over. We celebrated Palm Sunday last week. We have experienced again the darkness and the brutality of Good Friday and the cost and sacrifice and love that took Jesus to the cross. We said then it was Friday and that Sunday was coming and Sunday is now here. Our call to worship is Psalm 118, Our Salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice today and be glad in it. This is a psalm of thankfulness that God's love endures forever, sung on the very first Palm Sunday and ever since after the re resurrection on the first Easter Sunday. The psalm looked forward to the coming of Jesus for hundreds of years. Indeed, we can say joyfully, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and so Sunday has come. It was Friday and Jesus was dead on the cross. His friends were confused and terrified and they had fled. The women were in grief. Judas had just killed himself. Jude, Jesus' enemies were rejoicing. The Roman soldiers had just carried out another day's crucifixion duty. The world anguished in earthquakes and darkness covered the earth for three hours. Almighty God and his beloved Son were separated, and then there was the final cry of Jesus, It is finished. It is finished. But no one knew what was coming, no one knew that the final cry was a cry of triumph. The sacrifice was complete. Redemption was accomplished. But there was one more scene to be played, the defeat of death. It will change the world. It will change everything. And when Jesus spoke of this previously to his disciples, <coughs> do you believe this, he said. Do you believe this? And Jesus says this to us today. <coughs> well, it was Friday, but Sunday has come. The day of resurrection. Jesus has risen from the dead. And so we say, Alleluia. Christ is risen, and you, are, and you say, Christ He is risen indeed. Alleluia. <coughs> it's Easter Day. We celebrated a sunrise service this morning at 6. I think there was 26, 27 of us. At 9am we had our church family breakfast, and that's just sitting comfortably just here at the moment. <laughs> and here we are, the greatest day in the Christian calendar. I never tired of saying this. You'll have to carry me out screaming if you want me to stop. It is the greatest day in all of human history. Hallelujah. Ponder that. <laughs> Praise God. This is the day that split history in two. And how kind of someone to bring in AD, uh, BC and AD to recognise that split. So we say again, we've practised now, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so our Easter triumph, it changed everything. Do we really believe this? Jesus faced the worst, the worst that Jerusalem could do to him, but he triumphed.
Our first hymn this morning is O oh, to See the Dawn. It begins with the agony and darkness of Friday, but ends with the victory and power of the cross on Sunday. What a love, what a cost. We stand forgiven at the cross. Let us stand to sing, O oh, to See the Dawn.
the story for us. We're going to have a time now of an Easter communion, a very short communion in the middle of our service, but how poignant, how special to connect it in with our Easter day service, to remember the sacrament that Jesus left us just before he died. And so this is the table here, not of the church, but of the Lord himself. It is made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, not because it is I who invite you, it is the Lord. It is his will that those who want to should meet him here. Amen. The story. On the night before the crucifixion, when evening came, Jesus and his apostle reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives to Gethsemane. A loving God, our gratitude and praise, these you deserve. You prepare a table for us, offering not just bread, not just wine, but your very self, so that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. You are worth all our pain and all our praise. So as we do in this place what you did in the, in the upstairs room, Send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and of wine, that they may become for us your body, healing, forgiving and making us whole. And that we may become for you your body, loving and caring in the world, until your kingdom comes. Amen. And among friends, that night, gathered round the table, Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us take and eat the bread. he took a cup of wine and he said this is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death take this all of you to remember me let us take the wine and drink Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. Amen. Now our prayer of praise and confession for Easter Sunday, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Lord God, we praise you this Easter, the day of resurrection. We celebrate that Jesus Christ has been raised to life again. We come to you on this Easter day to rejoice with you that Jesus Christ is alive. This is the day of celebration and thanksgiving. We celebrate that the tomb of Jesus is empty 
and that your love is filling our hearts. We celebrate that Jesus is Lord and nothing can stop him making all things new. Lord, we are filled with great joy because of Jesus, who died on the cross that we might be free. Lord, we are filled with great joy because of Jesus. He is now the source of hope, comfort, forgiveness and peace for everyone. May the joy of Easter give us courage to face whatever comes in the days and years ahead. Forgive us that we live and speak and act sometimes as though Jesus is still in the tomb. Forgive us our sin and selfishness and take away our doubts. Set us free to know you and praise you more. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We start celebrating just a little bit more now. And we now come to a time where we are going to thatch the cross. And during the thatching, we are going to sing our next two hymns, Low in the Grave He Lay, and See What a Morning Gloriously Bright. So the thatchers will come forward, but just before they start, let me explain first what is being done here to this cross. The cross was a dark and cruel instrument of torture shame and death. The Romans used it to terrorise and control the world that they ruled. And it struck fear into society. And it struck fear into Christ himself. He was human after all. But for us as Christians, it's be it becomes a symbol of new life and hope. Because Jesus overcame that sacrificial death on the cross for us and rose again to life. And what better way to convert this cruel cross than into a symbol of new life, covering it with the life of bright new flowers. So we have our thatchers. I suggest we sit for the first hymn when Rachel starts it and she will lead us into the second hymn where we will stand. Thank you Rachel.
Yeah. We've, got things to, we've got things to do. Quite a few technical issues here. Right. <laughs> it's a very worthwhile task. I can't say it's for the hand done for two years, but I've done it outside. The famous video. Whilst they continue, let's, um, let's just offer a dedication to our offerings that we make when we can. Let us pray. Almighty God, as part of our worship today, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us and your provision for us. And in our thanksgiving, we have offered our gifts to you. Please accept our offerings of money given by various means at these different times. We pray that we, they may be used wisely and well for the sake of your kingdom here, through the work of your church, to be a blessing to others. Amen.
unimaginable good news, he has risen. Some of the most powerful words in the Bible are questions. Questions that if we ask them of ourselves, they may take, the answers may take us to new depths in our knowledge of ourselves and of God. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Is an ironic question. On the face of it, it was a silly question, because the women were, were seeking not the living among the dead, but the dead among the dead. Nevertheless, Easter is the time to be faced with supremely silly questions at times to help us understand it and the situations around it as we navigate the unknown territory of the resurrection. For the people who had been around Jesus in Jerusalem, life was beyond belief on that first Easter day. An enormous stone rolled from a tomb, a missing body with his grave clothes in a neat pile. Men in dazzling white appearing with ridiculous messages. Women instructed to bear witness to what they have seen. Something they could never do in a cult in that society, having been considered gullible, unreliable types as witnesses ever since Eve was deceived by the serpent. Men expected to believe an idle tale told by women, really? And that was only the beginning of that day. The cast of human characters in the Gospel is familiar. The named women who went to the tomb knew Jesus well. They had, shockingly in their culture, travelled with him and the disciples and helped to provide for them, for him, for them financially. Peter was probably Jesus' closest friend. The women were perplexed and terrified. No resurrection joy for them as yet, but at least had the presence of mind to find the others and to report what they had seen. Peter was curious enough to go to the tomb and look, but at that early dawn stage did not move on from amazement. So he looked, just as Jesus had looked at him when he denied Jesus. This time he saw not Jesus' eyes, but his absence. Was this his turning back? Was this his repentance of which Jesus had spoken as a prelude to strengthening the others? Certainly later that day Jesus appeared to him privately and within weeks Peter was at the centre of the proclamation of the Gospel to the world. Not only was Jesus changed by the resurrection, Peter became a completely transformed man. We rush to Easter joy and rightly sing hallelujah with joyful hearts. Distance from events and knowing the end of the story, we have had time to take it all in. But on that first early morning, nothing had prepared the women and the disciples for what they experienced. So their first reactions were fear and doubt and perplexity are completely understandable. At dawn, all they knew was bad news. The body was missing and their first thoughts were far from resurrection. Even when Jesus appeared to them in stories that we shall hear in the coming days and weeks, it was not immediately good news because they took time to take the mental leap that resurrection required. If you had, this is terrible really, but if you had seen someone brutally slain who was a dear friend, most of his flesh torn off, all of his blood drained out of his body to, onto a huge pool at the base of the cross. This was the one you had pinned your hopes on. This is the one you loved as a brother. If you saw him alive, 
two or three days later, you would not believe it. I believe that would be true. You wouldn't just rejoice. You would be traumatised to see that person. You couldn't believe it. Wouldn't be able to believe it. It would be a trauma. They had seen their friend die a most horrible death. They were in shock. Today we would call it post-traumatic stress. And resurrection was not in anyone's vocabulary yet. But Jesus did try to tell them. So the empty tomb was not gospel in its sense of good news yet. To become the gospel good news, along with the emptiness, there had also had to be encounter with the former occupant of the tomb. To become the gospel good news, along with the emptiness, there had to be an encounter with the former occupant. Their imaginations need to be burst open by resurrection, but that was still to come. On this first day, all this was indeed for them quite unimaginable. But we can't leave it there. We know the story. We know what happens next. Jesus didn't leave it there. Even more unimaginably, he starts to appear. Easter is not just a one day celebration of something that is past but the yearly acknowledgement for us that when God raised Jesus from the dead, a new age began, of which we are now a part. They were about to experience an encounter with the occupant. And as I've said, over the next few weeks, Jesus starts to appear and appear, and in the end to several hundred. Then we know fully the story of resurrection, and I look forward to briefly sharing and reflecting on the appearances when I next have the opportunity to speak in, in May. The appearances, the miracles of miracles that took place that underlined and found and bring about the full truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which changed the world, which split history. Oh, oh I could go on and on. Amen. Our next hymn is, This is the day of new beginnings, Christ be our light. 2,000 years ago, this day changed everything. And today, this day changes everything still for us. We can rejoice because this is the day when death was defeated by love. God's love. Let us stand to sing, this is the day of new beginnings.
Please be seated. Whilst we can celebrate in freedom, it's right that we pray for others who are not enjoying freedom, for those even enjoying war today. We have prayed much for Ukraine and we will continue to do so. But um, let us remember Ukraine as the word touch you now as we pray. So let us bring to God our Easter prayers of intercession. Blessed are you, Lord our God. On this first day of the week you raised your Son, Jesus Christ, triumphant over death and sin and evil. And in his death you have destroyed death, and in his rising to life you have opened to us the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, stand among us all. And would you respond by saying, in your risen power. In your, in your risen, risen power. power. With the whole church throughout the world and in heaven we rejoice, for Christ has risen. Let every heart rejoice, for Christ has risen. We ask your blessing this day on all who are celebrating the resurrection. We pray especially for groups that are persecuted or oppressed because of their faith. We remember also all who doubt the good news of Jesus and all who are seeking Jesus. Jesus, stand among us all in, in your risen, risen power. We remember today all who are struggling with life. And we particularly think of the church in Ukraine and the churches in the surrounding countries which are taking in those that have fled. We pray for the world's poor, for refugees, for those used as slaves, for those terrified, for those grieving. We ask your blessing upon all who are losing heart or who feel despair today. We pray for our families and our friends that you will protect them and provide for them and enable us to show acts of kindness to those around us. Jesus, stand among us all in your risen power. We rejoice in your triumph over death and the fullness of life and hope that is ours. We rejoice this Easter day in your glorious resurrection and in all who turn to you in repentance and faith. Bless your church in this land as it continues to serve, love and care for their local communities, bringing faith, hope and peace. We pray for those we know who are bereaved, those suffering and who are vulnerable, anxious and struggling. May they experience your love and comfort and healing and hope this Easter time. Jesus, stand among us all. In your risen power. Amen. Our last hymn this morning can only be Thine be the glory. Let's give him the glory as we worship and stand to sing Thine be the glory. <coughs>
just want to say thank you for joining us today here at church, online and read at home. It has been good to be together to remember that unimaginable day that took place. Let's pray. Lord God of resurrection, Christ was raised on the first day of the week. And as we go into the days which lie ahead of us, remembering your new dawn, may we know your risen power and strength. And may the light of the risen Lord shine through us. Amen. And so to you, dear church family and friends, may the purpose and the power of the cross and the triumph and the joy of the resurrection and the presence and the power of the risen Lord be with you all. Amen. And I have to add, the Lord bless you and keep you today. The Lord make his face to shine upon you tomorrow and be gracious to you every day. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace for all your days. Amen.